Distinguished delegates, dear participants, during the whole conference we will discuss a lot of technology aspects, but what will happen if we consider the last mile? Last mile is considered of that part for delivering connectivity from the communication provider to the customer. As an introduction to the video presentation of the Living Lax experts, Professor Dr. Malin Hesselmann from Pretoria, a CSIR Meraka, we will consider the combination of Living Lab and the last mile problem and the consideration of technology. How can technology bridge that gap and what can we do if that technology is not available? So what is the problem? Um, we considered during the whole conference uh, spatial decision support systems and this is a technology solution. So what can we do if the technology is not available for the users or communities that are exposed to public health risks? So the living labs is considered as a research environment to overcome these problems, especially looking on the individual requirements and constraints that are there for rural communities. The presentation of Professor Hasselmann will help us to identify the options and challenges which are associated with living labs. So what are the objectives in context of living labs and spatial decision support systems? The aim is bridging the gap between ICT for the last non-ICT miles to rural communities. Even if there is technology available, it might not be uh, appropriate for uh, the last mile problem. How can we do this? Using living labs in rural areas to build interfaces to the ICT-based spatial decision support system. With an ICT support for non-ICT communication, for knowledge representation, sometimes for pre-disasters, preparation so as linked to you and spider and uh, to whom mainly rural communities where the IT presence is not so high as in urban areas. So starting with the risk and response cycle uh, we must look in detail where is the uh, ICT non-ICT gap allocated. If we look on spatial disease surveillance, then remote sensing does not create an ICT, non-ICT gap to rural communities. But if we look on ground data, ground data can be collected by a crowdsourcing approach and then we have the ICT, non-ICT gap to rural communities. First of all, we look on the decision support client. If mobile devices are used to um, perform self-assessment framework and the provision of uh, risk mitigation uh, knowledge that and bridging the gap between the ICT and non-ICT worlds to rural communities uh, will be relevant so that risk awareness and risk mitigation strategies can be applied to rural communities if no IT interfaces or an IT application is uh, applicable in that rural communities. So let's consider an IT solution that uh, could cover a certain range but beyond the IT solution will not reach the community. So what are the opportunities on challenges when there is an ICT non-ICT barrier? First of all we can extend the range of ICT and living lab approach, which is intro introduced uh, by Professor Hasselmann, could extend the range of ICT and tailor to the needs of rural communities. The presentation of Professor Hasselmann will help us to identify the possibilities of living labs for extending the range of ICT. There's one main question of extending the range of ICT are these IT, ICT solutions sustainable for the rural communities? Sustainability means we have to consider the ICT solution in the context of the priority of uh, human commun uh, communities. 
The priority might be water, food, jobs, health, public security and long-term public health and risk awareness might be of very low priority. Diseases like chronic kidney diseases which have a long-term effect and an invisible impact on your personal health and individual health that might be not uh, so prominent in the in the public awareness. The ICT solution may cover a certain range and from that barrier from ICT to the non-ICT world there might be some transformation so that the knowledge about risk mitigation reaches the rural communities. I want to explain that by a general example of a sorting algorithm. A sorting algorithm in computer science uh, provides order to an unordered sequence of elements. And normally it's uh, executed on a piece of uh, hardware because the sorting algorithm is a piece of software. And it cannot cross the ICT, non-ICT bar uh, non uh, barrier because an, an effic efficient sorting algorithm needs digital objects to operate on. But what can we do to overcome this uh, transformation and the ICT, non-ICT barrier? So we can um, transform the existing objects into digital objects and extend the range of ICT so that an efficient sorting algorithm can provide it by the digital objects and in turn providing a sorting for the objects that are available and for which a sorting, efficient sorting algorithm was not available before. And if we regard a sorting algorithm not only as a piece of software and regard it instead of that as a problem-solving strategy, then it can perform a transformation from the ICT to the non-ICT world. So the sorting algorithm has a knowledge about sorting objects, can be provided to the user even without having technic technological devices available. And if the knowledge about efficient sorting is learned by the users in rural community, then the problem solving strategies is available without the IT environment. And transferring it to public health, the sorting algorithm can be replaced by risk mitigation strategies that provide personal safe assessment framework for the risk and risk mitigation strategies for personal use and improvement of public health. As a piece of software, we can provide risk response and risk mitigation by extending the range of ICT and find appropriate ways of using technology in rural areas. On the other hand, we can transfer ICT solutions into non-ICT solutions and knowledge about risk mitigation and we can use the ICT directly at the ICT non-ICT frontier to support social workers or public health workers in that transformation pro process for capacity building in rural communities. Applied on um, low-cost precision farming to reduce the amount of necessary agrochemicals will have a positive effect on economy uh, on the economic side and a, and uh, a potential a positive effect on the public health side and if this positive effect is realized by spatial decision support clients with uh, where um, mobile devices are necessary and if we could not overcome the ICT non ICT barrier then we have the opportunity to extend the range of ICT by providing decision support clients to the rural communities or we transform the risk mitigation strategies by application methods for agrochemicals that reduce the personal risk for the farm workers. The living labs um, are directly allocated in that area of ICT, non-ICT transformation of knowledge. So the, not, the technology itself 
uh, cannot provide full solution. It needs a kind of transformation process, a real allocation to the, to the requirements and constraints of rural communities and the methodology what we see um, by um, the presentation of Malin Herselmann will help us to identify this local requirements and constraints and having at the same time a generic uh, approach for adapting these solutions to other um, maybe slightly different rural communities with, with different requirements and constraints. Marlene Hesselmann uh, will provide insights in that strategy of living labs as a research methodology for sensing, prototyping, validating and refining complex situations in multiple and evolving real life contexts. A very warm welcome to you Marlene and thank you for sharing your expertise with us and answering questions in the flash meeting afterwards. The floor is yours Marlene.